Hey guys, I'm Kristen from College Lead. I help students with planning high school courses and extracurriculars and also guide them through the college application process. Today, I wanted to cover what a spike or an edge is and how you can use this to your advantage in the college application process. You might have read about a spike or an edge on different blogs like College Confidential, Quora, Reddit, or even heard it from your college admissions officer or counselor, sorry, I meant counselor. Um, a spike is often described as a specialty or skill that you have spent a lot of time developing, and it's usually a great way to increase your chances of getting into a top school. But before I dive into the details of the video, I always like to start with saying that every student is different, so please spend your time doing your own research and develop a plan that is best for you. What I like to do in my college lead videos is take my experience and the experience of those who I've seen around me into and take the framework and strategies that we've applied and share it with you guys rather than the very specific examples we've done because in that way the strategies and templates that we use will be more applicable to your experience as a student because it goes back to here that every student is different first question to consider is what is a spike in the first place so a spike is a specialty or a particular skill that you have focused a lot of your time developing a spike can also be a unique or extraordinary challenge you have faced and overcome. So this is for those stories, for instance, came from a very difficult uh, situation financially and were able to still make the best out of the limited resources you have. There are a lot of other different examples of unique or extraordinary challenges. And if you think you might have one, feel free to include that on your college application and write about it in a personal essay. It's always good to present yourself as a whole person holistically so college admission officers can get a picture of sort of the context and also the resources you had available to you. But that aside, in this video, I'm going to focus a little bit more on the traditional definition of a spike, which will, I believe, apply to most of my audience here. So great, a spike, definitely good to have, but why do you need it? A spike is recommended for college apps because right now getting into college is very hard and it's a competitive process. Everyone knows you need to have a high GPA and high test scores in order to get into a good school. But because so many people know that this is a standard, a lot of people will have this when they apply to schools. So then it becomes very difficult for admission officers to differentiate or pick students who have these two characteristics. And what admission officers have turned to instead is looking at your extracurricular profile. And that's where a spike comes in. A spike is how you can stand out from all other applicants. But remember, you still need to have that high GPA and test score. You can think of having a high GPA and test score as sort of a qualifier in order to get into the next round in the college admission process. So how do you develop a spike? The easiest way is through your extracurricular profile. I made a video describing how to build your extracurricular profile to optimize it for a college app, specifically the common application, in a previous video. I will link it in the description or in the corner of this video. And um, if you haven't seen it already, please do go and reference it because I will be covering some of the stuff uh, in this video from that one. In short though, I mentioned that one way to group your extracurriculars is into skills, so skills-based activities. An example of a skills-based activity could be athletics, if you are a varsity athlete. It could be music, if you play an instrument. It could be, let's say, public speaking, if you're part of debate or mock trial. It could even be STEM, if you are a researcher, you could even break it down into biology. and the list goes on. Now, each one of these areas has the potential to be your own spike. And what I recommend doing is sitting down and thinking about what are your interests and passions? What are the skills you would be interested in developing or that you currently have already? I recommend picking at most three different skills to uh, focus on. So at most three to focus on, oh, that looks like a heart. At most three to focus on. If you focus on any more than three, it'll just become very difficult to develop a spike. For instance, let's break the time and energy that you have in high school into uh, points, 100 points, let's say. And you can delegate those points to different activities that you're involved in. If you have five different skill categories going on, then each one of those five categories will only get an average of 20 points aka you may not be able to devote a lot of your time to each category so maybe you'll be average in five different activities 
On the other hand, if you focus on two different activities, you'll be able to spend 50% of your time in each one. So at that point, you may be able to uh, get national ranking in both of those categories. Remember, you want to develop a specialty and not a casual hobby. Let's do a quick fun exercise. Let's pretend that we are college admission officers um, at Harvard, which is my alma mater, and we are given the task of choosing one of three students to accept. Student A has a perfect GPA and a perfect SAT score and also focuses on one, two, three, four, five different skill areas with activities that fit under each area. So hopefully this example will also ground what I mentioned previously here with skills-based activities being grouped into um, sort of themes. And a recommendation of mine is to focus on three themes at most. So that doesn't mean you only do three activities. It's that you focus on three themes. We can clearly see that student A is very hardworking and accomplished, but the problem is we don't know how skilled student A is in each of these areas. For instance, if student A studied violin for 10 years, does it mean they took a lesson once every month or maybe once every two weeks? As an admission officer, we don't really know how well student A is at violin, especially since student A's time is split across these all these other different activities. Student A also doesn't have a particular specialization since they do choir, tennis, swimming, drawing, debate, and Spanish. It's a lot and there's no common theme that really connects it. Now let's take a look at student B. Student B also has a high GPA and SAT, but they're not perfect. We have a 3.9 GPA and a 1500 SAT score. What's interesting is that student B is focused on two different areas or themes music, and then also STEM. Student B studied violin for 10 years, so that's the same as student A. But the difference is that student B is also a member of a nationally recognized youth orchestra. I'm guessing violinist, so let's change that to violinist. And I forgot to mention this earlier, but all these examples are purely illustrative. I made this all up, and this is not based on any actual student. So if it happens to be like you, that was a pure coincidence. <laughs> Student B has also competed and won national and international competitions, also in violin, um, and also started a local performing arts society for students. So you can see how all of these are related to this theme of music, and that student B has developed a very strong specialization here. So this is a spike. Student B has also focused on STEM. Uh, student B writes a blog on sustainability, has founded an environmental club at high school, and also works in a lab and has been published in a paper. These are all pretty huge accomplishments, and student B clearly also has another specialization here. So student B's edge, or spike, are music and STEM. It's very clear to see where student B is focused, and you can also notice that student B has been able to achieve national recognition and also high achievement here, and also has leadership experience here and here, and each of those specializations. Now student C. Student C has a significantly lower GPA than the other two, a GPA of 3.0, and an SAT score of 1200, also on the lower side. The extracurriculars, I would say, just are similar to B. Which student would you end up accepting into Harvard? Obviously, you want to go with student B. That's because student B is the one with maybe not perfect test scores, but test scores that are still very high, as well as a good GPA. And the extracurriculars are very strong. There are two spikes in music and then also in STEM. The reason why we would reject student A is because despite a perfect GPA and perfect SAT scores, student A doesn't seem to have a focus or a specialty area. Clearly student B is stronger because of this national level recognition as well as these leadership activities and also this recognition here as well. Obviously, this is a simplified version of a student. A student will have other aspects to consider, for instance, honors, etc. But I just wanted to use this as an illustrative example. The reason why we would reject student C is because the GPA and SAT score simply doesn't meet the requirements for Harvard. If you're aiming for a school like Harvard, generally you want to have a high GPA, ideally above a, you want to have a GPA much higher than a 3.0. And you also want to aim for an SAT score where you have at least a 750 in each of the categories. Because student C didn't meet these criteria, student C probably would still struggle in our school academically, even though student C would likely excel extracurricularly. 
So there you have it. That was a super quick run through of a spike and an edge. And hopefully you know now how to sort of get started or even think about how you would want to shape your college admission profile. If you want any specific help with your college application process, whether it's essays or even writing the descriptions for your extracurriculars, or if you are younger than a high school junior and want some advice on planning out what your spike is, feel free to reach me at mycollegelead.com. If you scroll to the bottom of the page, there is a contact form and I typically respond within two to three days. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe for more content like this. Thank you so much for watching.